All right, so this is my very nice patient, and she came to see me uh, for a LASIK evaluation. She's quite a bit nearsighted before, and so she is now post-op six weeks-ish. And so we just wanted to kind of give her a chance to kind of share her story. So, so again, number one, just tell us, you know, what kind of trouble did you have that led to your decision? Okay, so before getting LASIK, um, I've been having trouble with contacts since I was like, I don't know, 20, and I'm 31 now. And so as a teenager, I just did not change my contacts out like I should have. And I left them in all the time, which is never a good idea. And so I, I started having trouble where I couldn't wear contacts at all mm -hmm. and was in glasses constantly. Oh, yeah. So when we would get family pictures taken, I would just have to take my glasses off and be blind <laughs> for the photos. Right. And I remember telling my husband, I'm like, I wonder what it would be like to lay on the couch with my head on a pillow and watch TV. Right. Because I, when you have glasses on, yeah. you it just pushes yeah. and hurts. Yeah. So, good. Yeah, so I was like, I'm gonna save up and I'm gonna get LASIK because it's something that, as someone who can't wear contacts right. and just has glasses in, or if you're somebody who gets irritated by contacts right. easily, right. I just thought this seems like a good opportunity and the window of opportunity opened to where I could get LASIK done and I thought, I'm jumping on this as soon as I can. Well, that's a great idea and yeah. uh, I agree with you. Half of our patients, you know, people think, oh, LASIK is just for folks who just want to have it to, just to do it yeah. and they don't realize, I mean, half of my patients come in because they no longer can wear contacts. So your story yeah. is very, very familiar. Yeah. So how about the surgery? What was it like? Well, at first, really, like I was so worried coming in because I don't do well with unexpected things. I like to have everything in a row. And you watch a video before, right. you have a lot of, you have a, a sit down where everything's explained and you get a paper that tells you anything that could go wrong and, and all these things. And so I came into it with a good understanding of what I'm getting done right. and the procedure, how it works and all that. But the thought of laying and like what if I sneeze right, right. or what if I have to use the restroom and I'm right. like laying there and I can't do anything because you're awake right, during yes, the surgery yes, right, yes. so it's always kind of frightening to think okay well I'm awake during this right. and so I remember getting here and I was kind of calm mm -hmm. and then I get sent back to the room and I'm like getting more and more anxious mm -hmm. I'm anxious by nature right, sure. and so just given some medicine mm -hmm. before the surgery because you are prescribed medicine beforehand right. and I start getting calmer mm -hmm. and I, I remember sitting there and then when we get led back to the room mm -hmm. Dr. Kim <laughs> uh, who is great cut on 80s love music <laughs> and I was like instantly I felt a little bit better <laughs> and so yeah, as, that's my jam. <laughs> yeah and so as that gets cut on and I'm like laying down I'm like okay this isn't so bad right. and I remember you saying uh, you're laying there and then like everything kind of goes black at one point right. I don't know what the machine's the suction, doing yeah. because I don't know what the machine's doing and so I remember you saying the worst part's over and I'm right. thinking that was the worst part and it was just like super mm -hmm. fast too mm -hmm. and then 80s love ballads are going and I'm like singing along with it and Dr. Kim's like don't talk and I'm like oh whoops I need to be quiet because this video is good or this song's playing and I don't need to be talking and so I just was still for it yeah. felt like it went by so fast right. it was the least painful thing I've ever done mm. um and it's just looking if you can look at a blinking light that's right you can do it and I mean it didn't take like I said it felt like it took maybe five minutes I called my husband right after and I was like I don't know why I was so terrified <laughs> going into this because it was the least frightening thing I've ever done yeah well you were a perfect patient yeah and um, everything you describe is exactly what we do yeah um, uh, but yeah, it sounds like it was overall not as bad as you thought it would be. No, not yeah. at all. And this is coming from somebody who was terrified going into it. And I remember laying there and I was like laughing and I'm like, oh, I don't, if I don't, can't sing, I need to not laugh while I'm doing this. So it was, 
It was, I've never gone in for a surgery and it be pleasant. Right. And this was beyond pleasant. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. And then how about the recovery and the vision? How, how describe how that. Yeah. Happened. So like the, I go home um, from the surgery and uh, obviously you just get it done. Everything's like kind of blurry, but mm -hmm. I could still already <laughs> just from the time that I sat up right. could see better right. than what before. I could before <laughs> without glasses. And yeah. so yeah. I already from the onset was like, whoa, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then um, like the next day, even better. And mm -hmm. I thought, I gave myself mentally going into it because of the paper that you read right. and you know, the research that's given to you beforehand. I'm like, okay, it might take three months for mm -hmm. my eyesight to get fully where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Or it could take six months or maybe even a year, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I went into it with thinking, okay, this isn't gonna be an immediate mm -hmm. thing where I can see great. Right. Um, but again so surprised because the next day I wake up and I'm like I can see the TV and my kids wake up in the middle of the night right, sometimes right, right. I have to cut off if they have a bad dream I'll sure, cut on sure. like Pooh Bear or something yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like I don't have I can see the TV I didn't glasses. have to go fetch anything yeah. I was like I can see <laughs> And then the whole next day, I'm doing this uh, uh, and this, and, and I'm like, they're not, they're not there. I was so used to pushing my glasses yeah. forward on my face. And yeah. I was like, I told everybody around me, I'm like, if you see me do this, <laughs> it's just, I'm so used to wearing glasses and fixing them on my face. Like, oh, you don't so, have to call the psychiatrist. Yeah, I had, no, I, I can't say that this would be the same for absolutely everybody, sure. but I can speak for myself right, and say right, I right. had no pain at any yeah. point in time. Right after the surgery, I took Tylenol. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I needed it. It was just a preemptive That's thing. Yeah. Took Tylenol. Mm -hmm. um, the only somewhat not great part would have been dryness for the first That's just right. week. That's right. And it was totally, you just put drops in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was, I thought, okay, I hope this isn't like a long side effect right, of this right, and right, I'm right. just going to have dryness all right, the time. Right. Within a week, the dryness was gone. I personally, I haven't had to use any drops since then. I don't have to use them on a daily basis. Yeah, so yeah, my yeah. eyes healed great. Like yeah. the whole experience of it was just life changing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well. I can wear makeup now <laughs> and I don't feel like it's not, I don't have any on right now, right, right, but sure. when I put it on, I'm like, wow, I feel like I can be seen. And right. I feel like my face is finally right, seen right, 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 yeah. because glasses are great. But like, if you're a girl, especially it's like you put makeup on, you want everybody to see your face. Sure, sure, and I sure. always felt like I was hiding. I behind understand. My glasses. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, it sounds like you had a great experience. We I did do. talk about how dry eye is something that can mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. But it sounds like you've done very well in yeah. just overall with everything. Yeah, and I had friends that I contacted that had also had LASIK mm -hmm. done. And I remember being like, did you have dry eye problems? And they were yes. like, no. And I'm like, yes. there's hope, you know. Yes, yes, But yes. It, it wasn't an issue at all. So, yes, yes. so oh, it sounds like you had such a great experience. Uh, I just checked your vision in your 2020. Yeah. And so let me again ask you, just real, just to wrap things up, if anyone asked you and they're kicking the tires about mm -hmm. this surgery, what would you say to them? 100% if you have the means to do it, yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. It's been literally the best thing. Mm -hmm. um, my only regret is not having done it sooner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you can do it and you're contemplating doing it and maybe you're like me and you've got like, anxiety about doing it in the process right. the doctors here great everybody makes you feel great the nurses i mean it helps a lot when you have people around you that are positive and make you feel comfortable and that's 100 percent my experience here Aww. so do it <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much yeah. for sharing your story we really appreciate it yeah. you're welcome thank you.